hyperactive hybrid of Depay and Cameron Archer, or the next Romario, ready to take Europe by storm. Just how good is Vito Roque? Vitor Bueno no cruzamento de perna esquerda, Vitor Roque! In terms of golfer, as we can see, Roque is formidable, but we have to bear in mind the weak opposition he's been facing. The fact that he's only really operated at this level for a season, so there's no basis for consistency. And his age, which from a positive perspective, provides scope for growth. In terms of technique, we can see that he's got a hard finesse shot, which can operate from distance, is beautifully executed with plenty of venom, gives me a David Villa vibe in terms of how unstoppable it looks. In terms of dinks, chips, he's able to lift it over an onrushing keeper. I wouldn't say there's a large body of evidence of these types of finishes, and nor do they look out of this world spectacular like a Davo Suka, but it's an efficient finish to have in his locker. What I particularly adore is the finish when he's running across goal to his right and he cuts it across to the far corner to the left. It feels like his trademark finish and it's very hard to execute this type of finish, but he makes it look so effortless he's placed it to perfection. Inside the box, bit of a live wire, runs across goal really well to get finishes on the near post, as well as plenty of tap-ins on the far post. He's got a great feel for inside the box type of situations for one so young. In terms of weak foot finishes, he runs across the goal really well to get finishes on the far post, as well as getting plenty of tap-ins. In terms of weak foot finishes, we've only really seen them from close range, but they look decent, effective, particularly where his body's flooding the six yard area and he has to quickly locate a pocket of space in which to manufacture a shot. He does that quite well. Overall, a poacher with a good smell for goal, perhaps lacking the stardust in his finishing range of the very best strikers. In terms of headers, Roque is a contradiction. He's a menace inside the box who can leap like a salmon and plant the ball into the back of the net, whether it's from open play or set pieces. A very wriggly character who's hard to get hold of. He's quite courageous, willing to put his head where it hurts, as long as it means stealing the show with his head. And yet, in terms of aerial duels and winning headers from long balls, he's mediocre and easily bullied by centre-backs. His height counts against him and he just struggles to time his header and make any meaningful impact in the air. So why this contradiction? Well, we've seen that players like Inzaghi and Chicharito Hernandez were pretty good headers of the ball inside the box, but outside of it, they couldn't win the ball like an Alan Shearer or a Drogba type of centre forward. The difference is that one header involves a pure physical confrontation while you're having to back into a bigger man who can jump over you, and the other involves the art of deception and you can use your movement to leave a defender behind and get to the ball. Not to mention the angle of delivery is different, so it's more of a side-by-side -side duel rather than you backing into someone else. In terms of his dribbling, Roque is pacey, he's agile, he's powerful, so on paper, you can see why he's a formidable ball-carrying prospect with the ball. The issue is that I'm not sure the precision of his dribble is as good as players like Michael Owen and Sergio Aguero at the same age, let alone a Romario who was GOAT level in terms of skill. Roque does have flashes of that Brazilian flair, but the range of skills is not comparable to the elite Brazilians who've come across and dominated the European game. Once again, I reckon with maturity, I think his decision making with his dribbling is sure to improve. I think, for example, his ability to nutmeg will get better with age. Inside the box is where his dribbling could prove especially dangerous as he has quick changes of direction and against clumsy big centre-backs, he could be a bit of a nightmare to deal with. But again, does he have that trickery to outfox the very best defenders in the world? Let's just say Saliba in five years' time. If Roque was used as a winger like a Darwin Nunes is by Klopp at times, I think in certain games that could work where the opposition right back is very attacking and he ends up attacking that space left behind. But against a defensive right back, I think Roque, whilst he does have the sprint endurance to feature at wide, I don't think he has that dribbling range and consistency of ball carrying to do what Mbappe does at wide to the very best defensive fullbacks. Hey guys, Pythagoras and Boots are proud to announce a partnership with FB Ref and introduce you to their brand new and quite simply brilliant feature, StatHead. StatHead FB Ref is a sports search engine that enables you to raise the most obscure statistical queries relating to football, giving you the keys to the most comprehensive public football database on the internet. Now these are just some sample searches which the FB Ref guys have suggested, but ever wondered who is the best header of the ball for a small defender? Well you can find that, you can put a cap as to the height of a specific defender and the area of success rate you can decree 
what specific range you want it to be. And here you go, most aerial duels won in a season by a player 1.75 meters or shorter. If you ever wondered who creates the most goal creating actions in the season coming from defensive actions, you know, who's the most efficient and effective counter-attacking team or winning the ball from a press and creating that goal opportunity straight away, you can find those type of stats at click of a button. Now, this is an example of me using stat head in action. Bearing in mind, I've only used it for half a day, but within a couple of minutes, I was able to find out which EPL side had the best accumulated goal difference since the Premier League era began and which side had the best points per game average. A somber reminder of what Manchester United used to be. But yeah, it shows that this feature is incredibly powerful, yet simple and easy to use. Now, I hope you found all of that useful. Please note that it's currently in a beta state and it's free to use for a limited amount of time. I personally can't wait to continue to get to grips with it and utilize some of the historical stats for my videos. And I'd recommend this to other content creators, journalists and anyone who's just got a passion for football. Vitor Roque domina, afunilou, a bola chegou pro Cri. Creatively, now we've touched upon the fact that Roque is more of a poacher, and when we look at his creative stats, we can see why he wouldn't be a false nine or a number 10. His way to pass is quite poor when it's threading balls through in intricate situations. I think he's better when he's doing little flick ons or layoffs, as that doesn't require as much calculation or thought. It's more instinctive, and he suits these more fast paced situations where he has to quickly think of a solution to a problem. In situations where he has to split the defence from a vast distance, we can see that he has some vision. But again, the execution isn't really polished, but there's some potential for this to be refined. What's clear is that Roque is raw in this creative sense, and the ceiling, whilst not being particularly high, with time and the right coaching, I think he could be more creative than a pure Inzaghi type of centre forward. But again, I think he's unlikely to match that all-round game of poachers like a Romario or an Aguero. Defensively, stats-wise, Roque puts in half the work of a Jesus at the moment from a pure numerical perspective, but I think he's got the physical and mental foundations to be a bit of a pest and be that workhorse type of forward that Jamie Vardy was for Leicester. I think he's got some spite in his tackles and due to his upper body conditioning, he can barge defenders, especially when they receive the ball in the channel areas and he makes that diagonal press and follows them in to that wider region of the pitch. I think Barca need this type of high work ethic type of forward because an aging Lewandowski was not the right type of forward for their high press philosophy. I think Roque would allow them to hound the opposition and pin them in their own half. At the moment, Roque's participation in possession is pretty non-existent. He's making barely 10 passes a game. Now, some of that is due to tactically his team not really needing him to participate in possession as much. But his player profile is that of a poacher. Now, that doesn't mean at times he can't spin with the ball and body off a centre-back. But overall, the game that he has is geared towards making movements into the box. What I would say is that he does clearly like to run into channels. And as he ages, he'll get even stronger with his physical conditioning and he'll be able to hold up the play in those wider areas of the pitch. What I would say overall, though, is that his first touch doesn't really feel as good as a Sergio Aguero during those early days at Fletti. He felt more strong, he felt more elite, felt more skillful, could kill the ball dead, even with players like Carlos Puel on his back. I think Roque is a bit more raw in that sense. O Fluminense agora tem três por dentro, então é um jogo de superioridade numérica do Fluminense nesse momento. In terms of his long passing, Roque barely uses long passes in his game. He's got a tendency to hit long passes with his first touch. I don't know if that's by accident or on purpose. And it leads to transfers of possession. Channel passes wise, when he does drift out wide, he's got a nice whip to his pass. But again, the weighting of passes feels suspect. Switches of play. I think there's barely any footage which supports his ability to use them. And he's quite reluctant to utilize them. But when we have seen him try and spread the play, I think there's potential for this to get better. But I really doubt that this is going to become a prominent feature of his game. In terms of Roque's crossing, he's got a lovely whip ball when he drifts out wide. And as we've mentioned in the creative section, 
He's good at finding cutbacks and sliding the ball across the six yard area. So whilst he isn't good in the 10 region when he drifts out wide, he can cause some damage and set up chances for teammates. From the left, not as effective with the cross because his inverted crossing isn't as good as his whip balls from the right. He isn't, however, averse to using his left foot to pick out passes. So I wouldn't say he's a total right off from the left, especially when we also factor in his goal threat when he cuts in from that side. Tactically, Paranaense play a very fast-paced style of football and they utilise either a 4-2-3-1 setup or a 3-4-3. And in either of these setups, Roque features as the number nine. As we've touched upon, hard-working but doesn't really touch the ball often with most of the moments that he gets on the ball high tempo in nature. That involves either quickly laying it off or being asked to engage in a high-speed dribble to get a shot off or to quickly lay it off again. Now, there's very little pause displayed by the side and specifically Roque in general. For Barca, quite frankly, two potential roles for him. The main one, direct replacement for Lewandowski, spearheading the front line, or at times even being used down the left as an inside forward to help him acclimatise to the league. What I would say is that he gives Barca a more effective press and he would provide a more direct in-behind threat for the likes of Pedri and De Jong to find from deeper areas of the pitch. Also watch out for him drifting out wide to put crosses in and also getting on the end of crosses too. In conclusion, I think Roque has the attributes to develop into a world-class poacher, but I'm not sure if he's got enough dribbling range or the elite touch finishing skills to rival an Aguero Atletico. But what he may prove to have compared to the Argentinian is a hungrier appetite for the bigger stage. I think he's definitely no Romario. He doesn't strike me as an intergenerational level talent. I think Romario is comfortably ahead of this kid in terms of skill level. And what concerns me is that his style of play is pretty reliant on that athleticism. If he lost that, would he still have the base game to be a top, top player? I'm not so sure. Physique-wise, looks already equipped to deal with men's football. I think there's La Liga goals to be had for him even at this tender age. But for me, stepping up to a club like Barca at 18 is a humongous task. Even the likes of R9 Romario, they had to go to clubs like PSV first. And I think it would have been wiser for him to be loaned out to a smaller team in Europe first to fill out his game technically before he wears the blue and red. I think injuries, lack of football at this key stage of development may render him a Europa level player because game time is so important at this phase of his career. But I suspect with fortune, he should at least become a Champions League level striker with the potential to attain world-class poacher status if he can work on rounding out his game. Anyway, guys, Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.